Good morning, guys. So today in this one, we're just going to carry on with the um, the door and the key system. It's raining really heavy right here, um, right now, so hopefully you can hear me and it's not too bad. But let's just crack into it. So um, at the moment, we've got a door that'll open up when you walk in range of it. The next thing that we want to do is create the mechanic for that to be lockable so that you need a key to open it. So let's crack open the door blueprint. Um, right here where we've got the overlap event, before it goes to open the doors, we just want to add a little check in here. So we're going to say, um, get player character, and we're going to cast to uh, third person character. Like that. And by casting to the third person character, we've now got access to the third person variables. And this is where we're going to get their number of keys. So let's just compile and save that right now. And then we can just crack into the third person player blueprint. So go third person player BP, blueprints, um, third person character. Um, find some empty space, just ignore all of that. That's just from other tutorials. And then just down here, um, Actually, not even down there. We don't even need that. Let's just go to our variables down here. And let's just add in a variable called keys. Like that. Um, and make that of type integer. Compile and save. And that might actually be all that we need. Yeah, let's just roll with that for now. Okay, so what we've got is we've got a third person character. This is back in the door BP. Drag off of third person character and type in get keys. So now we've got the number of keys. Now we want to just check. We're going to say um, greater than integer and it's going to be is the number of keys greater than zero and then we drag off of the red pin and we add a branch just like that so if the number of keys is greater than zero um, before we open the doors what we want to do is we want to subtract a key so to do that um, I could just drag this across here and say set but I don't want to I tend to want to avoid tangling wires and overlapping wires so, a cheeky little way um, to do this is if you just drag off of this, your third person character, and just call this TPC for third person character and then ref. And then you can just cache that off there so we can use that um, in a minute. I tend to do this um, all the time whenever I use casting just so that I can save myself space. So then you can drag in your TPC ref like that and you can say set number of keys. And the number of keys that we're going to set it to is going to be a minus integer. And it's going to be get keys, get number of keys minus one and then set that to the new amount of keys. Just like that. And we're going to just sit that over here like this. So we could even just collapse this like this. Collapse that to a new node and just say, take key. Just to um, compact it even more. So um, I just lost my event graph. So if you ever lose your event graph down here, double click that. Now I've got it back. Um, we could comment this as well. So this is saying, um, double click the little bubbles and this is overlap with player. And then this is saying, um, get player. And then this one's doing, does player have a key? And then we're going on this one, take key. Not question mark, just take key. And then after you've taken the key, we can open the doors. <laughs> just like that. Um, now what we might do is just in here, let's just add a, um, a print string so that whenever we try to open the door, we can see how many keys the character has. We'll, we'll put um, a key widget on the... Actually, you know what? Let's just do the key widget right now. It shouldn't be too hard instead of worrying about print strings. So with that all have done, let's just... 
with that all done, let's just leave that as it is for now. Um, go back into your content browser. What we're going to create is a little pop-up thing on the um, screen, not a pop-up, but a little number that'll just sit in the corner of your screen that'll just tell the character how many um, keys they have. So if we go into key and door, just right click in here, user interface, widget blueprint, and just call this uh, key, key count widget and open that up. Now this would be very simple, just go up into your palette up here, type in text, drag some text into the screen, um, anchor it to say the bottom left like that, and then change the position relative to the bottom left to say, I don't know, like 100 and 100, or 100 and negative 100, like that. Um, and we can make the size a little bigger if we want, even though it's not going to do anything because we need to change the font. Change the tick size to content instead of changing the size. And then um, change the alignment to one on the Y, I think. Yeah, so that'll anchor it. This position in the corner now is going to be um, what's giving us these positions to the edge there. So we've got the text block and that's going to be the number of keys. So we can just type in zero like that. And let's just make this a bit bigger for now. Let's give it a size of 100 so it's massive. So that's going to be your number of keys. So big you can't miss it. Alright, so now um, let's... Let's go up to text block here and where it says um, text or whatever. Let's just call that number of keys and tick is variable. Now if we go into where it says content and the text, we've got an option for a binding. So let's create a binding like that. And this is going to be a function that's going to get the text for this text block. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say cast to third person character, drag off of object and say get player character. And then off of here, we're going to say get keys. Just like that. And then you hook that up to there and it converts the text, converts the integer to a text. Um, that should be good. So if we hit play, um, we don't have the widget yet, so we need to create a way to get the widget. So, in the event graph of your third person character, um, I think I've got a begin play node somewhere here like this, yeah. So just off of your, just type in um, right click and then just type in begin play, like that, and you'll get this. Um, all we're going to do off of this is just say create widget. Um, and this is going to be key count widget and then add to viewport. Simple as that. That's all we got to do. Um, and that should be good to go, I think. Let's see. Alright, so we've got the number in the corner. Door doesn't open. But we can walk straight through it. You see that? So there is something that we can do about that. If you go into your door BP, the reason that you can walk straight through it is because these doors don't have collision on them. They're set to block all, but that's a lie because we just walk straight through them. What if we just drag one of the meshes in and see what happens? So if we type in door one, oops. Oh no, they're not actually called door one. What are they called? They're called SM door. Okay. So SM door. We've got this one right here. Let's see if we can walk through this. Yeah, we can walk straight through it. Okay. So if we want to add collision to this door, it's actually pretty easy. Um, you just double click on the static mesh down here. And now you're presented with this static mesh viewer slash editor thing. Um, go up to where it says collision over here. Just tick simple collision and then go to collision up here and then add 26 DOP simplified collision. And now you'll see those green lines, that's the new collision for the box, the new collision for the door. So we can close that down now. Now let's have a look. Beautiful. Can't walk through it anymore. Can't walk through this one anymore either. Okay, sweet. So that's all done. Um, how are we doing for time? Nearly 10 minutes, that's alright. So we've got our number of keys. Um, Maybe we can just quickly add a key blueprint as well. 
So go into your door and key thing. Um, I've got a little image for a key. Just if I show you here. Um, it's just a little image like that. I'll put a link to this in Dropbox so that you can download it if you want. But you could just go to Google and just type in key image and you could just download your own if you wanted. That's where I just got this from. It was just a quick Google search. Just make sure it's got a transparent background. That's the most important thing. So you just drag that into your content folder like that. We can get rid of that now. Um, now let's just create a new blueprint. And let's just call this um, key BP. Like that. Um, add a component. Uh, type in a widget, perhaps. Yeah, we're going to have to use a widget because it's a 2D key. If you had just a 3D mesh, that'd be easier. But because it's just a 2D widget, like it, we just have to do a little bit of work, but that's fine. Um, so for that key widget, we're going to need to create another widget down here and just call this uh, key widget. And then in this one, just up in your palette, type in image, drag in the image. Um, just change this to anchor to the full screen, I guess, and change the offset to zero, zero, and zero, and zero, like that. And then for the image, type in key. Yeah, there we go. So it looks a little bit stretched. So what I might just do is just shrink it down just a little bit. There we go. That'll get the job done. Okay, so now that that's done, back in your key BP, click on the new widget component that we added, and then where it says widget class, type in key BP, key widget, there we go. And now we've got a, a floating key in the world, just like that. Now it looks a bit squashed. Maybe I should have kept it so it was, um, whoops. Maybe we do want to have the offset to zero and zero. Now, how does it look? No, that's definitely stretched. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Okay, let's just roll with that. However that looks is how it looks. That's fine. And I mean, you can scale it in here as well. So we can get that looking, looking good in here. That looks pretty good to me. And um, just add that a little bit above, yeah, maybe like, maybe not 200 above, but say um, 100 units above the root there. And I've got a feeling if that's 100 units, this is going to have to be much smaller. Maybe something like that. So this is uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and it's 100 units above the root. Let's just drop that in the world. And, oops, we can't drop that in the world. We can drop the key BP in the world. There we go. Yeah, so that's a nice looking key. Just like that. And then when we walk over it, we'll pick it up. Okay. So let's just add some collision. So type in collision, sphere collision. Um, oops. Ew. I hate collision. Just call that collision, I guess. <laughs> and we'll just drag that up so that it overlaps the key. And then just change the radius to like whatever. Whatever you think is an appropriate overlap. Um, delete all of the stuff in the event graph, click on collision, right click in the event graph, say begin overlap, add on component, begin overlap. Is the overlapping actor equal to object? And the other object we want to check is the player character. So if the overlapping actor is the player character, um, and we get an if, is, or if statement with a branch, then what we're going to do is we're going to grab that player character and say cast a third person character and then we're gonna set keys of the third person character and actually I'll show you a better way to do this you can type in increment integer like that which will just add one to whatever integer you hook up to it and you can type in get keys down here like this and just hook that up into there and that should do the trick. Um, and let's just type in print string off the end just to tell us how many keys we've got and see we can see if that matches with the widget the widget on the HUD to make sure that the keys on the HUD are updating. Um, and then after that we can just say destroy actor self. 
There was a massive strike of lightning just then. I don't know if you could hear it. I'm scared for my life. Okay. So if we walk over it, boom, there we go. One. We got one key. Um, and what if we walk into this? Yo, there we go. Our door opens. Beautiful. Well, that's basically the tutorial done then, isn't it? 15 minutes. There is one more thing that I want to quickly do. Um, just with this key BP, this is kind of irrelevant to the tutorial, so you can stop if um, if you want, but I'm going to add an event tick for the key, and we're just going to off this tick, is we're just going to update the widget so that it faces the player, because at the moment, if you were to walk around the back, the widget disappears because it's just a widget, it's just a 2D um, picture floating in 3D space. So if you drag off of widget, we say set world rotation. Um, and what we're going to set the rotation to is we're going to type in find to look at rotation. And the start is going to be get actor location of ourself. And the finish of the look at rotation is going to be the actor location of the player character. Oopsie daisies. Get player character. No, not camera. Oh, no, camera manager might work, actually. That would be even better because then it faces the camera. Happy mistakes, yay. Um, okay. So this is just finding the rotation that's required for this widget to look from where it is right now to the camera. And then that's going to update that every frame with the tick. So if we're walking around, beautiful. Keys following us. So we pick that up and then we can walk through the door. Beauty. And it took our key away. Neat. Alright, guys. Um, I mean, if you wanted to tidy this up and make it a bit cooler from here on, um, what else could we do? <coughs> Off of here, you could add a widget that said um, you need a key. So I'm just going to do that as a print string right now. So you could say you need a key. That'd be a cool thing to do. You could have a sound for that. You could have a sound for opening the door. Like a happy sound for that and a dun dun sound for that. Um, in your key BP, you could add a pickup sound or a particle system. So when you pick it up in here, you could type in um, spawn emitter attached, I guess. No, not attached. You want at location because we're about to destroy the actor. Spawn emitter at location. And the emitter could be like... No, we don't really have anything cool in here. What if the key exploded? That's pretty cool. Explosions are always cool. Um, and we get the widget. We say get world location. And then we just hook that up into there. So now we'll get an explosion when we overlap the key. Bang. So you could have a sound there. You could have a sound here as well. Um, but yeah, look, that's the idea. That's um, that's the keen door tutorial done. Use it however you want. Use it wisely. <laughs> um, that's it, guys. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll I'll see you next time.